you know, my entire life is like helping people have a great moment, whether mm -hmm. it's like a meal or it's a laugh or it's something or it's a show, you know, like playing live or like a song or whatever. Welcome to the first, uh, oh the first jog. Come on, gotta keep up. All right, so okay, my, name's, fine, let's do it. Not, my name's Sullivan King. We're out in Hollywood, my home city. You better stop, boy. Uh, we're in my home city of Los Angeles. Uh, we're down in what is it? Just kind of like the heart of Hollywood, Hollywood. Los heart of Hollywood, Los Feliz area. <laughs> so she's already winded. This is pretty funny. I do oh a lot of cardio God. for sets. Actually, I try to do about, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes of a uh, spin bike when I'm home, also about an hour on the treadmill <laughs> for this reason, because on stage I do a lot of running and a lot of breathing and a lot of screaming, and that takes a lot of yeah, skill. you're like an hmm. athlete over here. Oh, of course, you see this body? Lean and mean, oh I, got like, I got like 2% body fat, nothing but muscle and bone and metal. Shut up my camera. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. Are you, are you done, are you good? How are you feeling? Ready to keep I'm it up? I'm pretty Let's good. Up. Come on, you, bring, more. you bring out a bit more than Come you, on. I also bring out a Come lot. On. We gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> Ready, everybody be able to be watching this on a treadmill. She's done. Okay. Oh my God, that's so good. I'll pass it over to Laura now. What's up? <laughs> good job, Jacob. <laughs> yeah, and you have the backpack. Too. Yeah. He's got my gear in it. It's some military stuff. Yeah, now my, now my Hi. <laughs> She's literally still catching your breath. She's still like, hey. Hey guys. Oh, I'm sorry, I had to do it to him. I had to do it to him. <laughs> Test my fitness. I'm pretty fit for holding this for half yeah, an hour. Yeah, right? You got, so. some, you got some biceps Let's go. there. Don't want to get run over by the Cadillac meals, the Cadillac reels. Look at the oil that much. I'm fucking rich from that dubstep money, you know? So broke. So broke. <laughs> so I'm here with Sullivan King. <laughs> Gang. Gang. So you were originally born in where in LA? I was born in Glendale, California at Glendale Adventist Hospital. And I grew up in the hills, the foothills by uh, La Cunada, La Crescenta. Oh, are your parents originally from Glendale as well? Uh, no, my dad's from Phoenix. My mom was born in New York, moved to the Virgin Islands when she was a baby for a couple years, and then she grew up in LA. Oh, so. what did they, for what? Huh? Did they move here for what? What did they move here for? Yeah. Life. Because they lived in the islands forever, and they decided oh. that it was time to come to LA for like school and stuff it was her and her older brother you know better schools and all that mm -hmm. and then my dad was in the military oh he was a marine Ooh, rah, five. What's up? and then he moved to uh oceanside california and then he when he got out of the military moved up here mm -hmm. and then they gave birth to a god <laughs> <laughs> what does your mom do uh my mom is a watercolorist and my dad oh, wow. runs uh the world's largest chain of fine art schools very interesting. So art lives in the family. And what kind of music were they playing in the house when you were growing up? Uh, growing up, my parents, my mom didn't really listen to a lot of music. I heard more Oprah and Ellen from her room. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> as most boys <laughs> did in California, right? Uh, and my dad was everything from country to disturbed to ACDC to whatever. It was never really like pop music. It was like a blend of like, he didn't call himself a metalhead, but he listened to like new metal. So he listened to like Stained and... Uh, like I said, Disturbed, Lincoln Park, all that kind of shit. And then I kind of just, once I got into guitar, got into that world a little bit more. Originally your mom wanted you to pick up a sport, right? But you picked up an instrument. Yeah, exactly. My, well, it was anything. My, my brother started drumming and I thought it'd be cool if we like played together. So I said when I was 11, I'm going to play guitar, he's going to drum, and we're going to be a famous band like Van Halen. And uh, one of us did that. So. <laughs> what does so, your brother do now? Uh, my brother works at the family company. Oh. So, you know, standard uh, American dream. How did you find the music you liked originally? Like, where did you find it? Shut up. The music I liked originally was always kind of through my brother, still to this okay. day. Like, most of the music that I ever got introduced to was my brother being like, yo, listen to this dude, Skrillex. And like, whoever. Or like, uh, you know, when I first got into like, sort of the post-hardcore pop-punk world of like, Chiodos and a Devil Wears, uh, Devil, blah, The Devil Wears Prada. Um, and stuff like that, Vent Sevenfold, the Treyu, like it was always under oath, always through him and like his friends, so it just kind of trickled down. Before that was like Green Day, you know, kind of your standard like 2003 to 2006 bands like that, The Killers, um, Arctic Monkeys' first album, mm, so old good. Foo Fighters a little bit, you know, so it was like it was all the same kind of like rock that you would hear. 
mm-hmm. you know, standard to early millennium. Um, and then it just kind of slowly, the only thing I didn't really pick up from him was hip hop and rap. Oh, I mean, yeah. he listened to like Lil Wayne and 50 Cent and all that. And that was like, that was just never really my thing. Um, cause I was getting into guitar and there wasn't any of that in the songs. Were your friends in school also listening to the same music? Yeah, definitely. It? it was like, it was a lot of like My Chemical Romance and the used and shit like that. We all listened to the same things, you know. So. Mm-hmm. And you form groups of them also? Uh, I didn't really form groups. I had like, I used to jam with this one drummer friend of mine every now and again and like a couple guitar players here and there, but never really did anything with a band fully and like never went and played gigs and shit like that. That just never happened. You didn't um, want to or the opportunity just Both never? kind of like, it was kind of a little bit of both. Like it never really evolved. Like, you know, not to be a dick, but like I, I moved very quickly through my music. Like I was very much like, write and uh you know practicing way more than everybody and just spent more time on on guitar and and songwriting and stuff so like it didn't really fit for me to be in a band at the time you know it was kind of like everybody i worked with it wasn't really like dedicated and i knew that if i was going to be 18 19 years old and doing music Mm -hmm. i was going to be putting every moment of my life into it so you know it's kind of like we were talking before the video about like youtube i always loved youtube and wanted to get into youtube and blogging and creating visual content and film um, but I put so much time into music that that just didn't ever happen till really right now. So how do you describe your personality back then, growing up? <laughs> um, my personality back then, um, literally the same as it is now, just slightly less comfortable. <laughs> 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 you know, like when you're 18, uh, it was you know like starting to date, starting to do stuff where you're like wanted everybody to like you, didn't want to make the wrong moves or say mm-hmm. something stupid. Whereas like now, I just don't fucking care. You know, I do whatever makes me comfortable and what makes me happy in life and uh that's a big part of living and let's cross the street before we die <laughs> oh my god yeah so that all growing up <laughs> he was there first <laughs> sorry i like driving dude <laughs> i know what was that did he like school growing up um no i fucking hated school school sucks don't go to school for real i actually i fucking hate school i think it's it's really stupid so like i understand school school isn't stupid the way school is taught is stupid did you, or I guess... To She's be- like, no, oh my God. liar, <laughs> Guys, watch. get a degree. Um. <laughs> <gasps> uh-uh. So you spent all your free time just, what did your parents think of you just ignoring school and spending all your free time making um, music? My dad didn't care. My dad was super into it. He knew that I was a great guitar player kind of growing up. Hi, puppy. Hi, boo-boo. What's up? So my dad was super into it. He bought me my first guitar and paid for lessons in the beginning and stuff like that. And I really just always spent all my time um, playing guitar like first started off it was like six to eight hours a day of just constantly oh wow yeah so when I was doing that um he was like when I was like 17 18 I was like I'm gonna go to music school or do something and he was like okay cool my mom was like no you should probably like go to school for a semester and I showed up did all the tests did the SATs multiple times to get better grades because I fucking sucked and it wasn't I was stupid I just sucked at school you know what I mean Mm -hmm. um and so from there I basically went in and they were like hey you're stupid and I was like no I'm not and they were like yeah you're stupid you gotta do stupid people classes and I was like that's not fair and so I just didn't go to college and instead I went into music mm-hmm. what kind of career options did you have in mind before Icon like were you gonna be a guitarist for a band or like what, what were you thinking I never really knew I mean what I was gonna do um there was always something I, I always wanted to do something creative but if I was gonna go to college I was gonna go for poli sci and go be a constitutional lawyer and because it was always my dream to become president of the United States and I didn't end up doing that. Maybe not yet, 2044 is my <laughs> year yet. though. I'm dead serious too, I was gonna crush that shit. Um, like that or become like a senator or do something cool. And then I just decided I want to have fun with my life so I went into music. Um, <laughs> so I was either gonna be a guitar player, a producer, um, songwriter, something like that. It was either gonna be that or I love to cook so I was gonna become, oh, wow. I was gonna go to culinary school. If I didn't go to music school, <clears throat> I would've gone to culinary school. That's so crazy. Yeah. How, do, how did you get into if were one of your or one of her parents a really good cook, or what? Uh, yeah, my parents both know how to cook. I'm definitely the best cook in my family, not to be a dick, but I am. Um, and I just kind of, like, always loved food, and I was uh, home a lot. Mm. And so I always just, um, you know, found myself watching cooking shows and wanted to always learn more about it and just creating good food and good meals. And, like, you know, my entire life is, like, helping people have a great moment, mm-hmm. whether it's, like, a meal or it's a laugh or it's something or it's a show, you know, like playing live or like a song or whatever. Like I like giving people good experiences and moments and that sounds really sexual, but I'm sorry. Um, but like just something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
Yeah, and so food was just kind of another medium for that, and I thought that was great. What's your favorite thing to cook? Uh, favorite thing to cook is um, I do a really, really good uh, homemade fettuccine, uh, steak fettuccine. Alfredo, oh, that sounds so good. Fucking so Sidewalk good. Sidewalk tutorial, maybe. <laughs> yeah, for honestly, I, I've thought about doing stuff like that. Like, I'm, I've been stockpiling recipes for a long time. I do that. That's really good. Um, I did a really good, I do a good chicken mole, like a really mm. nice chicken mole. Um, what else? Uh, really good uh, pesto gnocchi and scallops, seared scallops. Oh, I'm really wow. good at that. So I have like, it's actually a lot of like Italian based stuff. I love making pasta and like really working with my hands a lot. Uh, I think that's really, really something fun. I moved to Miami and the kitchen we got, the big thing for me was like, gotta have a big kitchen. Yeah. And we have this huge marble countertop. And so I'm constantly like rolling oh, my own so pasta. Cool. And stuff like that so mm -hmm. yeah my, my wife looks great <laughs> <laughs> and then going back so your brother got fl studios first and did he teach you yeah, yeah. Uh, how'd you find that out where'd you learn that <laughs> you your research look at you my brother had fl studio on his laptop because he wanted to be a rapper and he was a good oh. rapper and so he was like you'll make my beats and you know i'm gonna make songs and that's pretty much what actually happened when i was like 15. nothing ever went anywhere but he was like yo learn how to do this and i just thought production was really cool um, I couldn't mix or anything, so it sounded terrible. But and I would just sit outside for like a couple hours a day and sit and work on beats on his laptop until it died. And there, I kind of stopped for a couple years. Uh, and then once I started wanting to go back into music, I was like 17, 18. I heard about this school called Icon. And then once I went and did research on it, I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. So here we are. And are you still in contact with your guitar teacher? Was he in no. the Briggs or something? Yeah, he was in the Briggs. Uh, his name was Joey LaRocca. I haven't talked to him at all, um, really, in the last few years. Um, I won't talk to really any guitar players. I really only took lessons for about a year and a half. Oh, okay. And then from there just went on and did all my own learning. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be crazy for him to know that you're like touring and everything. Oh, he now. definitely does. Like, he's oh, a family yeah. friend. Like, I'm sure, you know, that they've heard through parents. Or oh, yeah. Like, you know, we, we were all super close, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And were you deciding between a few music schools or did you just like... No, I mean, there was like icon. a couple other ones. There was like SAE and like... Uh, stuff like that um there's one other one i can't remember full sale was another one which i think was in like florida or something and i never went there because they didn't really have the uh curriculum as far as like electronic music and that mm. was what i really wanted to get into um so that's why i ended up going to icon yeah this was how many years ago oh fuck um seven almost oh, wow. it was so actually actually as of october 1st i realized it's uh the seven year anniversary oh, wow. of going to icon damn that's crazy I'm yeah that's kind of early on, like a lot of their alumni haven't even gone there yet at that point. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. that was like the very beginning. I went, I had gone the semester before, the semester right after Kezo graduated and the one right before uh, Jaws started. So like I was in that little pocket of like all the OG kind of yeah. OG icon crew. Um, and we were all super close, super tight because it was a very tight knit um, class at the time. Really, really not a lot of kids. It was like 24 kids a semester. Um, and it was just, a, it was a totally different vibe than, than the last few times I've gone there and stuff. And it was just definitely, definitely a good experience to have. Uh, yeah. And where was your career at by the point you graduated? My career was, um, a non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> like, in all honesty, I hadn't done anything and it was, uh, I had no idea where I was going, what my projects were going to be, how I was going to do it, how I was going to DJ, if I was even going to play guitar. I didn't even have the concept of play guitar really yet. I guess I kind of did, but it didn't really work at all in the way that it does now. I mean, it took quite a few years. It was it was about, from the day I started, probably another four and a half years before oh, wow. I was like, okay, this could be cool. You know, like doing guitar, screaming that. And I didn't start singing really, singing, singing until 2017. Yeah. Like legitimately was like, I could I could scream on songs. That could be fun. You know, stuff like that. So By the time you graduated, you already come up with your name though? No. Oh. <laughs> I had no name. I had nothing. I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, so, yeah, Sullivan King didn't happen until, like, really, I mean, 2014, I kind of had to have the name and had to do something, um, because I had that song with Jaws, Per Evil, that came out, and yeah. we, had to, we had to put something out, and I had to have something, and have a shitty logo done, and a shitty name, and everything, and it went, here you go, and then it's changed and evolved since then, however many times. Oh, what was the original? Original what? Name? Oh, the original name was Sullivan King. Oh, okay. But it was like, it was just like logo-wise, like it looked oh. like trash, like you couldn't even see it on the artwork or anything, and you know, that was just how it went, mm -hmm. so. And at this point you were working at your family business, right? Uh, yes, I was. <laughs> I had just gotten, well, so when I, as soon as we signed the song, my dad was like, hey, you should probably go do music, and I was like, okay. 
And so that's what I did. That's so encouraging to yeah, just be he, he not a career, he, just he, being he, like, go do the it. The day before it got signed, it's actually a cool story, it's pretty wild. So my, my dad, I was working and I just kind of got overworking and wasn't really working at all when I was there. I was just kind of digging around on my laptop. And he pulled me in his office and was like, listen, as of tomorrow, you're fired, go do music. You went to music school, you need to just go do this thing uh, instead of like wasting your time here. And I was like, okay. And the next day, our first song got signed. That was cool. Oh my God. It wasn't like a big song. It wasn't like Capitol Records got a record deal, but you know, it was like the first time I had like a label say, here you go. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Were you still living with your parents back then? So you didn't really have many costs? Uh, yes, exactly. So I really didn't have much for expenses. I had like my car and so I was doing like little $30 master gigs and stuff like that. And that's, that's what worked out, you know? And how are you after the song with Jaws pushing the momentum? There was no momentum. I got nothing off of it. <laughs> the song kind of came out and you know, um, from there it was a very slow climb, 2014, nothing really ended up popping off. I didn't really have my sound down. I didn't have my branding down. I didn't have anything really in place of like, this is how everything's gonna look and, and sonically going to be perceived and et cetera, all that. So nothing really happened until, say about mid 2016 was really when things kind of started to make a little bit of sense and I was like okay I could do this guitar thing and you know the guitar was totally different a lot of it was just not even remotely in the same ballpark as it is now um, the way things look sound um, you know and social media is a totally different place as far as like how yeah. you perceive and things so hadn't done any tours had done maybe four shows so nothing it was just a flat line yeah where would you say got our initial momentum from then? What was that? Where would you say got our initial momentum from? Um, initial momentum really I would say came from starting to do those guitar cover videos that I did where I was remixing songs but playing guitar and I would do, I was working in a studio at the time called 17 Hertz in North Hollywood which is actually where Metallica recorded the Black Album, Motley Crue did Dirt and a bunch of stuff oh, like wow. that. Yeah, super legendary place, and I was producing some like bands and some artists, and doing like some ghost production and like little little things for like you know pop artists and stuff. And from there, um, I met a good friend of mine who is the studio manager. His name's Luke Sanchez, awesome dude. And he uh, started filming. He bought a camera, a little Sony, like what I got, and he was filming me doing like these little guitar cover videos and they were really dope and they kind of started to pop off online. People were like, oh, this is rad and your EDM was picking it up and a bunch of guys. And I had had productions and music out before that, uh, but it wasn't really getting any traction. So that's how it kind of like, there was some sort of build there. It was like doing one of like the Excision song with you. And I did this solo thing and he was like, yo, that's dope. Um, you should, you know, I asked him for stems, did the remix. The remix did really well. I think it's at 20. I guess that was actually probably 2017 when that came out, but like, as far as on the music side, what really did it was a song with Riot 10 called Fuck It. Mm -hmm. um, and that song got picked up by like Chainsmokers and Zed's Dead and a bunch of guys, and it was like right then and there. Uh, and then on the touring side, um, I went on the road with Icy Stars, and that was kind of like how I got signed to a, a booking agency, and then we went from there. So, you know, it was just kind of like, there's, there's like, there was, you know, like the branding online that needed to happen, the music, and touring, and those were kind of like the three things that came up together. Yeah. <laughs> and how did you meet Slander? I met Slander through Icon. So we had been oh, talking for yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and they were all really, really dope. Um, Derek and Scott are, have been insanely supportive of what I do. So yeah, they're, that's how I got to know mm -hmm. them. How about BTSM? Uh, BTSM had heard a remix I did of this Knife Party song. Please tell me you're gonna stop. Please tell me you're gonna stop. Of this um, Knife Party remix I did when they made Resistance. Uh, that came out, I did this like 150 dubstep -y remix thing which was kind of whatever but that came out um, and they liked it and picked it up this was like 2014 okay so I had put that out just on SoundCloud and they downloaded it liked it they played a show down in Orange County and said yo you know uh, we'd love to meet you or whatever like the, the promoter was like we're big fans of Sullivan King and he was like oh he comes to these shows every week you should come down <laughs> <coughs> and I had been going down it was true I was going to like two or three shows of those a month and um I went down and met them, nothing really happened, and then we started talking uh, back and forth a little bit, and they wanted to do like some label releases, so we did, uh, I did like a remix for them, we did a couple singles, and they said, yo, what do you think about an EP? And this was early 2017, probably, and then we dropped this EP together, um, and then they were like, yo, why don't you come on tour? Like, uh -huh, let's do that. <laughs> Um, and they've been fucking awesome, man. They're the most supportive people ever. And was it Grabba to encourage you to start singing or singing more? No, he didn't really encourage it. I mm -hmm. just kind of got inspired by the fact that his voice was so amazing. And I was oh. like, you know, man, I was like, damn, this is actually kind of cool. <clears throat> you know, and the way that he writes and like it kind of like, it, rather than trying to work with a singer, 
which was always not to be a pain in the ass about it or a dick, but working with singers kind of sucks a lot of the time. You know, they're, you gotta you gotta split percentage. They have their own creative yeah. direction. You're dealing with other managers. You're dealing with their labels, their publishing agreements, all this other stuff that like can get in the way of like the actual enjoyment of making a song with somebody. So I was like, I'm just gonna start singing on everything, and I'll learn as I go. And I did. And I really was having to constantly practice lyrics and recording and processing and how to make things sound good and fit and that was a huge challenge um and there's a lot of bad music out there that i've done but uh it's finally now where it needs to be yeah restored. and how about performing live was that difficult to practice like the singing yeah it's still something that i don't have 100 percent down i also don't sing as much as i want to live mm -hmm. because of how fast paced my sets are so like on tour the bigger shows i intend on definitely kind of doing more um you know, uh, just kind of kind of slowing down the performances a little bit so I can actually enjoy singing my songs and not being as worried about like, oh, it's gonna sound like shit because I literally have 20 seconds to run through this part before I have to run back and DJ oh, and not yeah. fuck up and, you know, stuff like that. So I wanna make it way more live performance based for sure. Mm -hmm. And do you have like a vocal teacher or how are you teaching I do, yourself? so oh, I, wow. I never did really in the past. I had one when I was really young when I was like 12 or 13 and we took like, you know, six or seven lessons with this chick. Um, but never anything for streaming, and I hooked up with this chick called uh, uh, Melissa Cross, or not mm -hmm. called, but her name is Melissa Cross, and she's one of the most famous and amazing metal vocalists on oh, the planet. Wow. She's done Corey Taylor of Slipknot, uh, Randy Blythe, uh, Lamb of God, Crown the Empire, like, I mean, Disturb David Draymond. Like, you can go down the list of literally metal vocal gods, and she's taught them. So, uh, we worked together for a few, uh, a few times in the summer, like July, August kind of getting prepped for Lost Lands and the festivals mm. that were coming up and getting ready for tour and it's been night and day difference of, oh, yeah. of performance. Yeah, it's really amazing. So, it's been super fun. Hey. <laughs> so. And I read in a previous interview that some of the songs you're putting out now that you made when you were 16 or 18. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff That's that so like cool. some cool riffs and stuff. I mean, even Wake Up, I was talking about this in at Lost Lands at the uh, producer den. I did uh, that Wake Up, the lyrics were something that I made when I was like maybe 19, so I was like 19 or 20, it was like right when I started in music, and just that intro, it's lonely at the top, like that whole thing yeah. was, the first two or three lines were totally something that was from like four years, and uh, when I was working with Jeff, was like, hey, you should do something that's, you should do like a ballad along with Fight Through the Pain, it'd be cool to do two songs, so I was like, okay, um, he's like, so, you know, crank away on some lyrics and stuff, and I was like, well, that's an idea that I saved from, you know, four years prior, the guitar line and everything, and uh, even then, yeah, a lot of the stuff on the album is is stuff that I've written from you know, 17, 18, and just kind of pulling out these riffs. Um, Does it surprise you? You're like, wow, I was already so talented back then. The fact that you're using this old stuff, I feel like most people like scrap everything. I mean, I think that that's the, the thing with writing is that creativity does, isn't really something that's taught. You know, mm -hmm. like you you can you can you can learn to paint, you can learn to do certain things, but like you know, like the creative imagination that people have, like that's something that you know certain people do have and obviously I mean like it's something that isn't taught like you can you can learn yourself to be creative um but you know back then it was I, I was only listening to music I was only playing guitar so yeah I mean by the time I was 18 I'd put in 10,000 hours in a guitar so yeah. it doesn't didn't really surprise me it wasn't like you know I picked something up at four years old and was just like oh here you go Steve I solo you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I had put in so much time already that it's it's it more surprises me now that all my music that I write is shit <laughs> <laughs> my man was in front of me just like would you shut the fuck up and I'll cut it off <laughs> what are the inspirations for your album inspirations for the album everything man there's so much every every electronic artist that from you know the mid-tempo shit like Rez and Blank to dubstep guys the Bully and the Excision and um, you know, Noisia and just kind of oh, Skrillex. Wow. Like any, you can go down any big name, and mm -hmm. it's, there's there's inspiration from there. And then of course, like on the vocal side, everything from um, you know the stuff that I've mentioned from Metallica to Shine Down to Slipknot to any any of those sort of you know rock metal anthemic writers. Um, you know, I, I definitely each song is different on the record. There's nothing there is nothing on that record that you could put two together and be like, yep, these are the same song. Oh wow. You can't. There's nothing on it. Mm -hmm. Most songs were completely resound designed to be different. Um, drums are different. There's there's so much on it. So, yeah. yeah. How about for the topics or lyrics? Like anything that reflects what you're going through in life, or what are the lyrics um, about? Not really. There's really not a lot lyrically that 
I kind of didn't want to do that too much and make it feel very dated as far as, like, what was happening at the moment. I mean, mm. I'm trying to think if there's anything, but, like, um, fuck, there's 15 songs. Actually, yeah, there's a song. There are a couple songs. There's one song um, about Iron Man when I just, at the end of Endgame, just <laughs> really, really hit me. Just took tears. So there's a song in there I'll let you find. Uh, another song is actually about... Oh my god, please don't kill me, please don't kill me, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. Um, there's a song about the Game of Thrones finale. Oh my god. So you can find out what song that is. I'll let you all go listen to it. But, you know, I, I definitely, like, I don't like to write... I don't like to write super um, intentionally. Mm -hmm. I don't like going into a song and being like, I have to write about love, so we're going to write you know, about this, and that's gotta be the topic, and it has to stay on that. Like, I'm very, I freestyle most of my lyrics where it's just line, 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 and what would I feel next? Well, blah, and how do I feel about this moment? Ah, uh, this, and I just kinda lay shit down, and however it fits, it fits, and, um, you know, there's a song, uh, what's the other one? Fact, Jacob, which is it? Uh, there's a song on the album called Why Don't You Love Me, which is my favorite song. It was the last song that was written for the record. It was done two days before the record was submitted, and the first verse was literally just, me uh, freestyling on my phone writing down lyrics while landing um, after a trip in Miami and just kind of like in the first the first uh, but it but it kind of it evolved into a new idea mm -hmm. um, and that was really really awesome and yeah I think that that's that's kind of what I like to do is it's like I kind of with lyrics I lay down a seed and just kind of see where it goes and it's either cool or it's not. And if it's bad, I just go back to the beginning. Of, well, what was the initial idea? It was this. Okay, cool. So rebuild it in a new direction, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's fun. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> How about for your tour? What about the tour? Exciting oh, updates? Oh, I'm so pumped or, for it. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much I'm so excited for on this tour. There's like, um, you know, I'm bringing out a lot of friends of mine that I, oh. I just like to hang out with on a daily basis. Grab it, swarm. Um, Lick. I mean, these are all like just super cool guys that I, I look up to musically and yeah. just, you know, as, a, as people, they're really great. And um, along with that, I'm uh, going to be actually having my own production on certain shows, so that's awesome. Mm. Crazy merch, uh, debuting tons of new music. Um, and it's cool because this, this is going to be the first tour where I really concentrate on not just like trying to win over a crowd. But actually, just like these people are here to see you, a Solving yeah. King show, so I'm going to give them a Solving King show, and that's something that I really, really am looking forward to. Yeah, so, that's so awesome. Yeah, and that kind of started at Lost Lands. Lost Lands was the first kind of like, here's what I've got for you, and I'm going to cram it all down into, a, of course, a 60 minute set on a festival stage. But here's kind of all a ton of my new music. Here's what I'm about. Here's the solos. Here's the guitar, and, and loud dubstep and this and that. And this. So. So cool. <laughs> How do you say your music has changed compared to the early songs you made? Um, it doesn't sound like garbage. <laughs> Honestly, the thing is, is actually it's simplified. So when I first started, mm -hmm. you know, it was very much how do I do everything differently? Yeah. And that was a waste of time. I shouldn't have spent as much time doing that and worrying about making everything sound the way it does and trying out weird shit. It should have just been, what's the idea? Make that idea great. And instead it was, what's the idea? How do I make this idea so far-fetched and different that people are just blown away? And that doesn't work. So I had to kind of change that a lot into, you know, where's the idea? How does this communicate to the audience in the best possible way? And that's kind of where I've had to meet, so. Mm -hmm. What do you say have been the biggest challenges in your life so far? Biggest challenges in my life? Yeah. Uh, fucking God, dude, I don't know, touring? Mm -hmm. Touring's definitely, there's really not actually that many, like the biggest challenges. Challenges would be, um, Jacob, what are my biggest challenges in life? Trying to complete stuff while you're on the road. That's actually, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, I could be like, yeah, my biggest challenge is, uh, you know, making sure that I eat healthy <laughs> forever, woo, and say something that's something super profound, but frankly, it's like it's balancing everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, seeing family when I can and working really hard, and, and when I mean really hard, I mean really fucking hard, and, yeah. and, and constantly worrying about, uh, you know, the business and how are things being looked at and, and branding and, you know, really just running, running this, not as just like, you know, I'm an artist, I can do whatever I want, but like, you know, being more business oriented mm. is, is way, uh, way different of a direction yeah. and, and kind of, I guess, yeah, learning the balance of artistry and creativity to business and management. What does love mean to you? Well, love is affinity. Love is, uh, how close do you want to be with people? Mm. Like, you know, what is your, you know, your liking for someone, you know, if you love someone, you want to see them every day and you want to be with them. And if you don't love them, you want them to fuck off. So, <laughs> um, you know, I think that 
you know, that's what it is. Love is just how much do you, how much tolerance do you have for somebody to be around you? Mm -hmm. What so. do you love about your wife's personality? Um, what do I love about her personality that's not the same as mine? Um, and that we actually <laughs> fight about it a lot. So, you know, I, I love I love my wife because she uh, is so very very vastly different from me um, in almost every single way. Oh wow! And so it's just it's it's a challenge to you know not a challenge but it's definitely a big game to try and get along with someone uh, that has in the you know very different opinions and. Uh, sort of lifestyle decisions mm -hmm. than me. You know, she would sleep 14 hours a day and watch <laughs> cartoons um, for fun, and I would be up at 6 a.m. working on music for 16 hours, yeah. you know, and it's like, it's just totally wow. different, um, but, you know, but she's pretty. <laughs> so. Last question, what do you want to be remembered for? For helping people. Mm. Um, I want to be remembered for uh, making sure that whatever I did impacted somebody in a good way and that's all that I could ever ask for. Yeah, I love this. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you very much. You guys are amazing. Yes. Thank you, Lauren. Oh.